Hi there, and welcome to this month's Two Road Talks Face to Face with me, Carrie Fraze, where I get a chance to chat in depth to medical specialists about specific topics. And today we are going to look more closely at some of the skin treatments that are available for face and body, and some of them are truly remarkable and really transformative. Well, with me are two experienced dermatologists. First up, we have Jorge Arandes, who specialises in dermatological surgery, psoriasis and laser treatments to treat the signs of ageing, rosacea, acne and scars. Thanks very much for joining us, Jorge. How are thank you? you? Thank you. I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we also have Dr. Maria Carrera, a specialist in aesthetic medicine, including the treatment of hyperpigmentation, wrinkles, scars and varicose veins. Welcome, Maria. How are you doing? Thank you. Great to have you both uh, today. Jorge, let's start with you. Um, mm -hmm. Firstly, just a general question about skin. Uh, tell me, why is skin so important, not just for its aesthetic value? What is its function? Well, I think that uh, well, skin is the, the organ with the most surface, with the largest surface of the, of the body, and the, the one that it's most exposed to the environment. So. Uh, I think too um, that it's important um, to um, to have care about it and um, to have a preventive medicine with uh, the, uh, the the cell files that can can prevent that if there's some kind of a typical mold that this can be uh, melanoma so we can remove it when we see the typical things that it's um, difficult, for example, to see it in the pancreas or in mm -hmm. the liver or in internal organs that um, skin um, have uh, external appearance and we can we can see um, before the the problems can be worse. So the the diagnosis can be um, do it fastly and, and, and I think that the care about the skin with the sun exposure and all of this, so it it can. Help um, population to prevent. So this is why it's so important to try to um, avoid uh, the sun between um, the most sun exposure that it's uh, um, eleven o'clock to uh, four o'clock in, in, in the afternoon, and and to try not to burn when when we are childs to prevent the melanoma in the, in the adulthood. So it's important that. Um, Keep in mind this organ that um, people um, sometimes don't 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 believe that it can be um, uh, uh, can have an important role in our lives. But I think that with uh, consideration in this in this uh, in this specialty in dermatology, so if there's some some something that we can do, I think that it's. Um, Good, a good way to, to, to go and we, if there's some people that have uh, doubts about any kind of condition that they have in the skin to, to go to a dermatologist and see what it is. Sure and Maria today we're going to talk about some of the, the topical treatments for, for skin issues but obviously um, the skin is a reflection of how you are internally so it's very important to keep healthy and eat well isn't it as well? Exactly, uh, having a good skin and, and, and feeling well, we talk about aesthetics as the way you feel be beauty or not, but it, sometimes people think that it's not important to feel good with yourself, uh, but it's also health. We're talking about the, the way you feel, it also affects your, your health in the global world. Yeah. Okay, so nutrition is important, right? Yeah, of course at all. Let's um, talk specifically uh, okay, about IPL, which is Intense Pulse Light. Could you explain exactly what that is and what it's used for? Yes, well, IPL devices generates a high frequency light that um, um, sent an, a heat to different kind of chromophores. Chromophores can be vascular, can be pigmented, or can be the water. Okay, and it depends on the um, type head devices that have the, the the machine that we use we can target these different kind of chromophores. So when you talk about chromophores, what, what types are you talking about? This is about um, hemoglobin, melanin, and water. Uh, about 
uh, pigmented lesions, vascular lesions, and water lesions. Okay, so if you wanted to translate that into to layman's language, people language that we yes. understand. Yes, for example, like if we want to treat a rosacea, rosacea is uh, a vascular lesion, and we target hemoglobin. Okay. So we use um, uh, fluence and energy with uh, uh, a wavelength to go through this kind of um, this kind of target, and so it's hemoglobin. If we want to treat, for example, um, spots or antigens, or antigos, for example, for the sun damage, we use um, the, the energy, the wavelengths, and we target to melanin, to pigmented lesions, okay? So with, the, with this kind of devices, we can, we, can, we can try to improve or to treat um, specific Kind of lesions and are targeting this, these three mm, most main principles uh, for MOFAs that we have. Yeah, and you, can you treat all three at the same time? Or? Yes, yes, oh, okay. of course. Uh, yeah, we can adjust and we can treat, for example, at the same time um, skin aging and rosacea. Okay, so it depends on the parameters that we use in the machine, the, in the device that we have, and we can use it. Or um, different kind of at the same season or separately. So that must be transformative for for a patient then to, to be able to if they if they do suffer from those three. Yes, yes, of course, elements. because there are creams or there are topical preparations that um, can help, but it's not en enough to um, to improve. So this kind of devices um, can help patients and can help doctors to achieve whatever we want to. To go and, and to, to achieve the results. Yeah. yeah, and there are lots of treatments, Maria, aren't there, for um, acne itself? We don't hear so often about the treatment for acne scars, which is great for, for teenage confidence because once they've got over one hurdle, thinking they've, they've got rid of the spots and then they have the yeah. scars, it's, it's something else for them um, to get over, isn't it? Yeah, of course. With, uh, well, there's a type of laser called Frax laser that targets, as, okay, as Jorge was saying, uh, targets the water. So uh, when we're treating scars, for example, acne scars, we treat it with this parameter or these types of laser uh, that goes to or treats or improves this, the acne scars. And so um, that's not a treatment that can just be uh, considered for, you know, more than 40 years old, but you can use it to teenagers to improve their, their scars. So that's also, that was, I was saying before, that's also health. I mean, that's preventing, you know, the scars of the acne, maybe in the future when they are those, they don't like their, their themselves or whatever. Great. And Jorge, does the treatment hurt? So you're sitting there getting this laser treatment, would it you know, how does it actually feel for the patient? Well, it depends on the patient, no? um, but um, generally it's a good to tolerate the treatment. Um, maybe FRAX is the most painful treatment using this, this uh, IPL device, but in general it's not necessary to apply any kind of um, anesthetic cream. Um, so, uh, so I think that it's uh, a good treatment without any kind of um, heart or, or heat that have to stop the treatment and, and pause for a, for a, a minute so um, people feel uh, a little bit of, the, of a creepy sensation but it's not uh, it's not so it's hard quick. yes yeah and, and Marie just to clarify it's for the face and presumably the chest as well or anywhere in the body where there's been skin well damage. you can use it anywhere right uh, it has to be evaluated by a, like a doctor first, uh, but it, as it can be used, for example, for scars or for pigmentary lesions, you can uh, do it, I don't know, in, uh, in your arm or in your necklace or in your face. It depends on where, what the, where you can treat it, but you can use it everywhere. Okay, so any scars, so say scars from a burn, for example, or something like that? Well, the scars, it. it's a very difficult um, condition to treat, yeah. and sometimes all the most of the times we need to combine some treatments, not just maybe the lesser, but uh, the scars, we can try any type of scar, but as uh, recent as better. I mean, if you've got a scar, you come uh, to a visit with us as soon as possible, because when they are, you know, red and not white, it's easier to treat when they're red. So as soon as we see it, 
the better you get. Okay, and, and what about post um, treatment, Jorge? What what does the patient need to look after? Presumably, there's there's hmm. there's creams and things that they need to put on afterwards. Uh, the the most important is uh, sun avoidance. Right. Okay. So um, you can do normal life uh, without um, stay at home and not get out. Um, but it's it's a, a recommendation to apply the sunscreen protection um, daily every two or three hours if you are going out for a long time um, and this is the first and the, I, I, I think the most important recommendation that we um, give to our patients uh, apart from from this it depends on the um, treatment we can uh, recommend some kind of um, relief creams okay. uh, with some kind of um, uh, substance that can uh, apply at more for the symptomatology mm -hmm. because when you finish this kind of treatments you can have a little bit red and edema that lasts for one or two days for a long and if you treat the skin spot aging uh, the skin spots uh, that uh, appears for 40 uh, Photo damaging, and um, you can feel these kind of spots um, worse than you have previously. So we have to advise patients that more or less in, in seven days, you um, the patients will feel these these spots more uh, grave. Okay, so yeah. it's important to, to advise because if not, the patient can can be worried about and can see worse results than than advising them start the, the treatment. So as long as they know that beforehand yes, so they yes. don't panic and go, oh, this doesn't look right. <laughs> and, and Maria, how many sessions do you do you suggest for each patient? And once you've had that set of sessions, how long does it tend to last before they come back again for, for another Okay, one? that's an interesting question, but a difficult one. Mm. Because um, as we always say the same, but it's, to, it's, it's necessary to evaluate the, the patient and also what we are treating. Because, uh, and also the area we are treating, it's not the same just to treat the face for a scar than treating, you know, the face and the necklace for photo for damaging. So normally we recommend two to three sessions separated themselves for one month, for example. And um, every year have an extra sessions to keep the, you know, the skin in that condition. But it can vary be, be between the people because sometimes after just one session, we can see good results. But if you want to have the best results, maybe we will need two or three sessions. But, it, you know, we will see with every person because everyone... It's different. Sure, and between that year of, of maintenance, yeah. I think there's good advice like you know minimize sort of sun exposure. Yeah, and what else, for example, can pa patients do just to, to ensure that their skins? For example, yeah, topical kind of, treatments. You yeah. say like creams. Or anything really. Okay. Yeah. Um. Well, I'm. I really like to to say that I prefer you know easy routine cosmetics than a difficult one or 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 treatments to one, because it's difficult to maintain in time, you know? But there's some things that, and, and Jorge, you correct me if I'm wrong, there are two things that are basic. The first one is um, to clean your skin every morning and every evening before you put anything on it, for example, um, with a cleansing. Right. Whatever, yeah. I mean, water and, and, and a cleansing. Right. And after eat in the morning, everybody should or wear some blocker mm -hmm. or avoid from sun, sun exposure. And at night, we really like some treatments that can improve your, your skin condition. Not to everybody, but uh, for example, to skin, skin age treatment, we really like retinal creams that mm -hmm. can help to avoid, for example, or can prevent the, the appearance of wrinkles or, or toxicity and to give you some more luminosity in your skin. But that's general things. It could be like to start with something. I will uh, consider first a good cleansing and uh, sun avoiding, and also maybe using some treatments like retinol at night. Sure, great advice. My final question to you, Jorge. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I, I, I guess this depends on the type of treatment you have, but cost-wise, can you give us an idea of what that would be? The cost, yeah, of the treatment. Well, it depends on on the on the pathology that you want to treat. The the site of the body, more or less one season, it's about uh, 300 euros, more right. or less. 
if you do more seasons, we can be back with more economic prices, of course. But more or less, it's the, I think the, the median price. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to move on now to PRP. Uh, Maria, this is platelet-rich plasma, and it's a procedure that's used, been used for some time, mainly uh, for treatments related to osteoarthritis in the past, that is. But obviously now you're using it more for treating skin conditions. Uh, which, first of all, which skin conditions does it treat? And then we'll talk about exactly what it is. Okay, so PRP is a treatment that has been used for a lot of medical specialties uh, since it promotes wound healing and uh, tissue rejuvenation. So based on these principles, on these, um, the, these, um, on this, uh, we can use it for aesthetics or we use it uh, for aesthetics to stimulate the collagen and elastic fibers and also because it uh, stops or decreases the, the apoptosis which is the cell death. So maybe we can talk about two main treatments which is skin edge treatments to rejuvenation and also the treatment of the scars. Um, normally when we talk about the PRP to the scars, we combine it with more treatments, for example, an IPL or a FRAX or whatever other laser device. Yeah, because scars are essentially dead cells, aren't they? So you're injecting... Mm, well, it's an inflammatory also yeah. uh, condition of the skin, it's a complex one. So uh, the combination of more than one thing uh, will or could get us good results. Right. right. And explain to me a little bit about how it works and the science behind it. Okay. Mm. So. Um, platelet rich plasma. It's an autologous serum that we obtain from a blood sample. Okay, so we take some blood from the patient, then we centrifuge and we just what take... What does that mean, the centrifuge? It's to move so very, really fast in yeah. a, you know, a special machine. So it separates the blood cells from the uh, serum that contains the platelets and the growth factors. That right. is what that's what you want. Exactly, that's yeah. what you, we want. We just take this serum, this PRP, and we inject it with really fine needles in the superficial skin. So that's where the growth factors and the platelets start their job. Mm -hmm. And th what they do, they um, stimulate the collagen elastic fibers, as I said, and also the angiogenesis. So the result in our skin is that it increases luminosity, and it reduces wrinkles and also the flaccidity. It's um, it's a treatment that's interesting because it has like a flash effect in the very first days. You you will see your skin more luminosity, mm -hmm. but the results will last. The absolute results will last for twenty to thirty days. Ah, so it doesn't actually last too long. So you, if you want to keep that look, you yeah. need to come back once a month. Yeah, well, once a month maybe not, but uh, maybe you know two or three months you can come back and then you can keep it you right. know it's not like the effect doesn't last and then mm, like anything else because as we have already stimulated the collagen the collagen is already in your skin but if you do it several times then the effect will be better so as time goes on you may find you need to do it less because the collagen is already being exactly. stimulated exactly. oh that's very interesting and yeah. Jorge are there any risks involved in this procedure risk well I think it's a no, a safety procedure, mm -hmm. so well, maybe infection if there's not antiseptic application, or but it's not because it's a, a self product, um, it's, um, it's very safe. Yeah, because yeah. some people might be a little bit wary about the fact that they're in injecting their own plasma back into themselves, but that's just a sort of psychological issue, right? Well, right. that's a really interesting thing because mm -hmm. a lot of people think about it, but, yeah. um, you know, uh, that's the only treatment that we do in aesthetics, but the product, the product comes from the patient itself. Mm. So there's no risk of, for example, allergies or mm. rejection problems. Mm. So I think it's, a, it's as, as Jorge said, yeah, it's, it's very safe. Very yeah. safe. And maybe the only adverse effect could be if you don't keep the area clean yes. after doing it. Right. Well, but Thomas, for yeah. example. Yeah, small wounds. Yes. Right. So, so the the care, the aftercare is. What what would that be then with this treatment? What's the difference between that and the IPL? After an IPL would be like I think mm, any other injection treatment that you can have. Having the 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 area clean, not to, for example, after it in the next in towers not to make up or to apply any cream that we didn't give to you mm -hmm. because sometimes we apply like an antibiotic cream after mm -hmm. doing it so we avoid the the, the infections but mm -hmm. um except of that 
Yeah. Yeah, straightforward. And are there some um, treatments better for PRP than IPL? What, what would you recommend? Which one for which? Mm, well, I wouldn't say um, better to IPL or to PRP, but to combine them. Right, okay. Because, you know, they both have things in common, like the stimulation of the collagen, maybe the, the PRP doesn't have the, a, a great effect on pigmentary lesions, for example, that the, the IPL GSC does, but they both, if you combine it, if we combine them, they can make a synergy, you know, and, and get better results. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Very good. And, and the costs for, for PRP, roughly? Uh, well, the, the cost of the PRP depends on the area we're treating. You know, it's not the same just the face or, yeah. or, or, or a larger part, but maybe in our clinic, I think uh, it's about 400, more or less. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Let's move on to chemical peels now, something I've thought about. Uh, and I've seen fantastic results, but it's that initial first few days results that I'm a bit wary of because I know that you have to get over that 48 hours before the glow comes. Um, but okay, just explain what a chemical peel is. Well, a simple explanation, I think that it's um, a chemical substance that um, destroy layers, a controller, a control destroy of layers of the skin with later um, regeneration. Okay, this is what what uh, chemical pills uh, do. Um, using which what though? We're using what is the peel? What's the substance involved? Yeah, there are a lot of different kind of pills with different kind of acids that it's uh, that can we can use. Depends on the um, type of the skin and depends on the pathology that we want to treat. Right. Okay. Um, and depends on the concentration, okay, of uh, each um, different kind of acids. Um, the indications of uh, chemical pins, general indications, acne, for example, um, wrinkles, we can use it for uh, some kind of little uh, tropic scars. We can use it for, for example, for uh, some kind of spots or, um, for example, Melasma, but melasma is a very difficult pathology to treat. Melasma is um, when there is an, an hyperchromic, uh, an excess of melanin uh, in the skin, okay? And it can be in the epidermis, in the dermis, or in both, okay? And it, we, we, see, we see this um, a lot in pregnant women, in when they take um, anticonceptive pills and in um, darker skin phototypes, right. okay? So it's the three most common um, clinical scenarios that we find this, this melasma. Melasma, we have to, to be um, cautious about it because if we provoke the skin, um, for example, with IPL or with some kind of chemical pills, we can um, we can um, provoke a worsening of the condition. Mm -hmm. So it's important to choose which kind of peeling or which kind of laser, because the IPL I don't recommend to do, mm -hmm. which kind of laser we can, we can use. Okay. Right, so the peel is used. Can you explain a little bit about the actual procedure itself, what, how, it, how it works yes. in the patient? Well, the procedure is to apply in, in the whole of face, mm -hmm. Treating to avoid the, the the space near the the eyes and near the, the lips and the nose, and it depends on the, the application, the time of application, and, and the the type of reaction on the different kind of pill that we apply. Okay, but it's it's to apply a substance and to wait for a, for a few minutes. And later, it depends on the peeling. We have to put another substance that. Um, Put off the fire. Yeah. Okay. Because how is the patient feeling at that point? Mm, yes, it, and there's feelings that mm, it's uh, not so deep that people don't feel anything. Right. There are others that it burns a little bit, and other that it's necessary to put anesthesia and go to a surgery room. Oh, really? Because can provoke a redness, yes. Is that because someone has more sensitive skin? It's, it's, it's no, skin. it's because of the deeper uh, effect of these kind of peelings. Right. Okay. So, um, nowadays, the peelings that um, 
we do is mm, superficial or medium. Mm -hmm. uh, deeper, it's it's not because with lasers there are a lot of um, treatments that um, years ago um, they used it um, deeper peelings, but now um, with lasers we we achieve better results or the same results without um, side effects that we can avoid. Right. So yeah. So you wait. I mean, if, how long is the procedure itself, more or less? The procedure. More or less 30, 40 minutes or 20 minutes. Okay. Between 20 and 40 minutes. Right, and then the patient's free to go, but presumably they, their face is going to be a little bit inflamed and sensitive. At this yes, stage. And, and you can have some scales during, it depends on the concentration of the peeling or the peeling that you use, for um, two or three days from well, until one, week, one month maybe. or zero, right. or more or less. But yes, so Maria, I imagine you know the protection, the aftercare for a chemical peel is super important. Yes, yeah, super important. Yeah. Sauna bites. We are yeah. all the time talking about this. Yeah, and <laughs> we live in a Mediterranean climate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're always repeating the same. But <laughs> after doing it, uh, we always give the patients the the, the things that they have to avoid and the, the the creams they have to wear, but always with some avoidance and wearing some blockers if it's essential. But the, the idea is that after what, a week or so, you've got nothing No, left. but I mean, for example, as Jorge was saying, um, it depends of, of the peeling. If it's yeah. a superficial peeling, maybe the next day you can do the, your normal life okay. or that evening. I mean, it right. doesn't have to be, you doesn't have to get out from here with your face all red or all swollen. Yeah. It's not that. Maybe if we do a more aggressive one, that we will advise you, for example, yeah. uh, and you are okay with that. Maybe you can have a um, downtime or longer, for example, a week or right. whatever. But we don't mm, normally use peelings that let you out of the play more than a week. Yeah, and, and, and these three treatments that we talked about are all about stimulating collagen, aren't they? And, and that's yeah. something that takes a while to regenerate, isn't it? So you don't expect results straight away. Sometimes you can see them further down the line. Exactly, yes. yeah. exactly. All of them, they they need uh, like a time to see the complete results. Mm -hmm. Okay, a cost roughly on this one, Jorge? Well, I think that Maria will ask better than me <laughs> <laughs> this question. <laughs> yeah, here in this clinic, yeah. maybe we can um, have a peeling for 150. Okay, yeah. I mean, and that's that's. Fairly affordable, isn't it? As, as far yeah. as aesthetic treatment yeah, goes. Yeah, it is, and even even more because normally we need to do more than one peeling. So yeah. uh, we recommend to do you know four to six uh, per year. So it's something we will do repeatedly. And that's what six a year every year. I mean, it's like a continuous. No, not, not not always because we're treating if we're treating acne. For example, in Jorge is uh, treating you for acne with. Another type of treatment, peeling could be a perfect treatment to combine or complementary. Mm -hmm. So maybe you will need just one year in your life. Right. Or if we're treating uh, skin epidemics, maybe we will do a peeling every year. It depends on, on the pathology. Yeah. yeah. Great stuff. Finally, I want to talk uh, about Botox. Most people will have heard of Botox, okay. uh, but there are still some concerns about it because effectively, it is a toxin, isn't it? Maria? Yeah. So how can you reassure people that it is safe if they're thinking about having Okay, it? Botox, well, first of all, Botox is a brand. There right. is a lot of, we're well, talking have I, have I, uh, put my What's the official name then? It's supposed yeah, to be it's a neuromodulator uh, um, uh, called botulinum toxin. Okay, so, I didn't have to say that. <laughs> no, no, no problem at all. Everybody uh, calls it, but we have to say it because yeah. there are more brands yeah. of toxic and botulinum toxin. But, um, it is used now for more than 50 years, so it's really safe and um, it's the most widely used treatment in aesthetics internationally. So um, the effect of it is, is, is a toxin, but uh, what it does is to, when it goes to the muscle, it um, avoids or reduces the, the, the contraction of that muscle, okay? but it just has an effect on that local place, you inject it. So um, we have also, of course, we have to advise people before they treat with the with Botox that there are some adverse effects that can appear, but they're extremely infrequent. 
and their, um, for example, headache or a ptosis of the eyelid or eyebrow, which is a dropping of it. But all of them, they resolve or they, 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 they are away by themselves in, in a period of time. For example, the headache can last for a week or two and the ptosis may last for a month, but they will resolve. Okay, so it's a really safe treatment, but people should know it. And all these adverse effects are related with the dosage and also the technique. Right. So it's important to look for um, the proper medical uh, that does it to you. Yeah, because there are a lot of estheticians that are now offering. Yeah, they are not like medical that. doctors. Yeah. yeah. So you would say go to go to a like, um, medical, medical doctor. Center. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. And, and what specific treatments are used for, for Botox? Is it wrinkles? Is it flaccidity? Uh, well, in, there's a lot of applications for Botox in the past, or maybe nowadays also, but um, it's used sometimes to, to treat some pain, for example, musculoskeletal pains or uh, spasticity, or off level, it is used also to treat the, the bruxism or uh, some migraine headaches and we also treat it which is uh, interesting to the um, excessive uh, sweating you know the hyperadrosis in the axilla uh, but mostly in aesthetic we use it to reduce the wrinkles you know in the upper third face like the front glabella and periocular mm. wrinkles and the key is like, I guess or the advice that perhaps you should give to patients is not to do too much because you don't want the, the kind of start with Botox uh, look, do you want it to look as natural as possible? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. well, even if you do it like every month, uh, you will like, you won't have the same effect on you. So, um, when you use Botox, maybe the next, the, the first effects, you will see it in mm, two, five days, the complete effect, you will have to wait for a week or two. And um, it's possible that you will have to repeat it, but we recommend repeat it like every five months, no, not less, right. I mean, no more frequently than that. Yeah, yeah, just to keep things as natural Yeah, as exactly. We don't want people to be paralyzed, No, but relax some muscles, you know? Yeah, and I think actually, I mean, that's a good point. And a lot of the aesthetic treatments now available, they're, they're labeled tweakments, aren't they? Where they're eff effectively making people look uh, much more natural, aging much more naturally. And, and is, there, is there a move generally away from surgical treatments? I know you do surgery, but are you finding mm -hmm. people are, are, are now preferring these more sort of superficial treatments rather than going yeah, for the full... Yeah, sort yeah of for example, um, botulinum injections can prevent wrinkles yeah. in the future. If you start applying at early age, you can prevent because there are a lot of wrinkles that are um, muscular ones. So if you relax, you can prevent. Yeah, you so can also do that. <laughs> you know, psychologically, you just relax. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but the preventive medicine, I think that uh, with the, the past few years, uh, we see more patients that worries about, you know, yeah. about uh, future hypothetic problems. So there are a lot of people who want this preventive medicine. Yeah? Yeah. For example, with, with botulinum injections, with IPL, for example, there are uh, papers that um, seems that with FRAX you can prevent skin cancer. So um, there are a lot of investigations about which kind of these these aesthetic treatments can can be uh, important for for a lot of um, mm. you, um, uh, aspects of uh, life. Mm, good to know. Yeah. Costs, uh, Maria, for for Botox injections. Um, yeah, um, maybe I think it's around 400 mm -hmm. here in our clinic, so every session. Okay. So as we will do it like twice a year or whatever, you know. Great. I've got one final question to both of you, which is yes. just a generic question about skincare. Um, aside from avoiding uh, the sun, which we know is, is really important, uh, Jorge, what, what would you say to people about making sure that their skin looks the optimum as, well, as they age? I try to to make uh, yes to, to to make sure that patient understand about the, the harm effects of the of the sun, mm -hmm. uh, not only on aesthetic, not only on what we see and the spots. Maybe it's more for for prevent um, uh, cancer, skin cancer, because the skin cancer is the, the most frequent cancer of the world. Mm -hmm. So. 
uh, with sunscreen protection we can prevent it and, and everything it's a simple action that we do you can do where you get up in the morning so you can apply it and and well if you apply it every two or three hours I think it's, it's, it's the, the, the best station no? but yeah. if you don't remember only if you apply it in the morning when you get out at home from home you can you can prevent the sun damage with the positive years in front yeah and a high factor right yes high factor yeah great isn't it well as Jorge said a skin is like the mirror for everything of everything that happens in the inside mm -hmm. so I would also add uh, avoiding smoking uh, doing sports and good nutrition because you know it's a reflect of it will reflect on your skin yeah. so if you try to avoid all of this Besides the sun avoidance, then your skin will be better. Fabulous. Great advice from you both. Thank you so much. Okay, carry on chatting. It's so interesting. So, oh, thank um, you. Maria, thank you Jorge, I really, really appreciate uh, your insights into skincare. I uh, hope to see you again soon. Yes, thanks to Maria and Jorge for their excellent advice. We hope that you've learnt something from this discussion. And if you're interested in one of the treatments we've been talking about, well, you can look at our website, which is turoparkmedical.com. Uh, we're also on all the social media platforms on face-to-face -face interviews on YouTube. So thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.